Hello. Are you here? I'm here. I bet you're here. What do you say we get this rolling? As the announcer, I should tell you this is the Paul Leslie Hour. It's an interview show. Been going for 19 years. If this is your first time, <laughs> we welcome virgins. Thank you for tuning in and turning on. And if you've been here before, well, we thank you again. Welcome back. So this is a very brief interview. It's an impromptu episode with returning guest Michael Utley. Michael Utley has been the musical director and keyboardist with Jimmy Buffett and the Coral Reefer Band since 19, get this, 73, 50 years. He's far too humble to admit this, but, well, he's an authority on Jimmy Buffett. He played on every single album since a white sport coat and a pink crustacean. And Mr. Utley also happens to be an incredibly nice man. In the biz, we call him Hoss. Yeah, he's a good Hoss. That's just the way it is. So it can be a strange thing that reunites people. In this case, Mr. Utley phoned Paul to comment about the country song, When the Wildlife Betrays Me, which he co-wrote with Jimmy Buffett and Will Jennings. It appeared on Buffett's 1984 album, Riddles in the Sand. Now, Michael Utley was just about to do a sound check, you see. The evening of this interview, he was just about to take the stage with Jimmy and the band in Key West, Florida. They talk about that and and a little more. Now, uh, just so you'll know, we are truly working up a sweat on growing the Paul Leslie YouTube channel. Now, our sweat don't stink. So hang on to that when you go subscribe to The Paul Leslie YouTube channel. Yes, folks, it is quick, free, and while you're there, ding, ding, ring that bell, and we thank you. Hey, since Michael Utley's here, and I'm here, and Paul is here, and you are here, let's get right into it with a masterful musician, Mr. Michael Utley. So the topic of discussion is a song, a somewhat obscure song, When the Wildlife Betrays Me, recorded by Jimmy Buffett. It was also recorded by Peggy Young, the late wife of Neil Young. So one of the things I had the opportunity to do is check in with one of the writers of the song, Mr. Michael Utley. Now, Buffett described the song as He said, we wanted to write a good honky-tonk, beer-drinking, late-night closing song. So, Mr. Utley, what are your recollections of writing that song? Well, that's true. Um, My recollections, it was written, uh, Jimmy and I and and, uh, Will Jennings wrote this album. Uh, It's Riddles in the Sand, I think. Is that the album that's on, I believe? Yes, sir, 1984. Yeah, exactly. And we we were in St. Bart's. And uh, my recollection is Will brought the title, When the Wildlife Betrays Me. It was apropos uh, for, uh, you know, it it's, as uh, I guess, for the times. And uh, I mean, not from a personal point of view, but just from, the, you know, d- to write a beer drinking song. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, Musically, I was, I didn't, I wasn't really involved with the lyrics. It was really Jimmy and Will. I can tell you a little bit about, you know, recording it. We cut it in Nashville and, uh, Reggie Young played the solo on it. And, uh, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's about it. But I know that Will pitched it to Peggy. Did she ever record it? She did. She did a, a really interesting version, I think. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to listen to it because uh, I just remember he was excited about uh, he was, you know, he will came from, uh, I guess he was around uh, when Neil did uh, after the gold rush in Nashville at quad and will a writer for uh, David Briggs and Norbert Putnam's publishing company. And so uh, that's, I'm sure that's when he met Neil 
And anyway, uh, so, yeah, I'm going to have to take a listen. Well, since I got you on the line, I just I, I know it's a busy day and you got to do the soundtrack, but I just have one more question. Yes. <laughs> there have been so many interesting, you know, bringing back these old songs over the last couple of years. And I'm just curious, from your perspective, because you have been with Buffett now for 50-plus years, right? That's right. In fact, January, 30, January 31st of uh, 1973 was the first recording date for White Sport Coat, Pink Crustacean. <laughs> so when we, we did that whole album the other night uh, in Key West, Key West Theater, it was interesting because we had – there was two of the songs we have never played live at any point, any time that I'm – you know, that I was around. And uh, so, it, you know, um, I think Jimmy even mentioned that we had done it – it had been a while since we had done Lovely Lady, but I don't remember ever doing it. So, you know, but uh, – so anyway, you were going to ask? I was going to ask, what does it feel like from your perspective, this this incredible – 50 years and these songs still loved by people and when you what does it feel like when you pull out these nuggets well it's exciting it's uh it, it you know and it just tells me it it reinstates that jimmy is such a talented writer and sometimes he doesn't get the credit he he, he deserves but these tunes are so well written you know, Death of an Unpopular Poet, that was on that first album. To, uh, I mean, uh, and you know, when we wrote last, Marshall was involved. Mar you said you spoke with Marshall Chapman. Right. You know, she was involved on, in, in Last Mango in Paris. And that was started here in Key West in 95, just the title, you know, and, and we ended up finishing it at the session, uh, in, in Nashville. And that's when it, it Will's apartment. Uh, he was living there, or he had taken an apartment there. So it was Will, Jimmy, and I, and Marshall. And uh, it was just, uh, you know, it's to see how well that's received, you know. And then, you know, you go on. You know, what's what's amazing <laughs> is our Mac and my uh, my son and his daughter wrote a uh, book on the shelf right. with Jimmy. And that's so exciting. And that's such a great song. And uh, so anyway, I'm just I just can't tell you enough. When we do these old tunes and listen to them, you know, he went to Paris. Hmm. I know we play that a lot, but you know, these these are tunes that you know are. Uh, so he's been doing it for 50 years, <laughs> right. to say the least. He's been writing great songs for 50 years. Well, Mr. Michael Utley, thank you so much for for checking in here and congratulations on most people don't make it five years at a, a gig or a job 50 years for you and you've been such a part of the story and uh it's wonderful to hear your voice well paul it's you know i think we robert robert greenish and i did the first interview with you back in the day back at key west at meeting of the minds is that correct it was yes. It was one of the very early broadcasts, and it'll yeah. be twenty years this October. Really? All right. <laughs> All right. So, I hope to see you again, and uh, have a great show. Definitely. Well, uh, thank you so much, and we'll talk again. All right. Godspeed. All right, see you. Paul. See you. Right, bye, bye bye. Thank you for stopping by today. If you enjoyed our program, consider telling a friend about it. The Paul Leslie Hour is made possible through people just like you. So you want to keep the show going, right? Go to thepaulleslie.com. That's thepaulleslie.com. Click on Support the Show. And thanks to everyone who contributes. Performance of the intro music is courtesy of John Primerano, the entertainer. Written by Scott Joplin. End credit theme music is courtesy of John Primerano, the traditional song, Corina, Corina. Your announcer is Dan Gold. Hey, that's me. The show is hosted and produced by Paul Leslie. And we'll see you next time on the Paul Leslie Hour. <laughs>